Let's extend these ideas to a more complicated situation. You might have received a survey that I sent out asking you to rank your engagement and learning from 1 to 10. Thank you to everyone who took this poll. I collected the first 235 scores as reported by Saturday, March 16th, and I put them in a link at the bottom so you can click on that and analyze the data. I removed any blank responses, but that's it. One thing to note before beginning to analyze this data is that I didn't state a very clear operational definition of engagement and learning. For example, if someone has only had time to view one lesson, but then life got in the way, their engagement might be one. That doesn't necessarily mean that they didn't enjoy what they were watching. So there are many arbitrary reasons why someone may choose the number they did. This is a good example where confidence intervals are not necessarily the best way to analyze this data after some kind of intervention, because there's not a real meaning to the scores people give. But in general, we know that higher scores are better. And this is where hypothesis testing comes in. First, let's get to know this data. Here are histograms showing students' responses. For this next example, let's just focus on engagement. What are the mean and standard deviation engagement scores? Even though the responses are a sample, just treat it as a population for the sake of this example. You're welcome to also calculate the mean and standard deviation for learning if you're interested, but we'll really only need the parameters for engagement. 